This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters on Patreon. If you want to join them and help our channel continue, there's a link in the video description. For many years now, the highly popular Orient Bambino has been arguably the go-to entry-level automatic watch. For around £100, it packs a mighty punch and looks fantastic, making it an ideal low-cost dress watch. Nevertheless, it's not a perfect piece. The lugs are awkwardly sized and the watch is still not the best size for smaller wrists. I've covered the Seiko 5 models before as well, which offer similarly good value for a low cost. So I was after something a bit different that you may not have seen or considered before. Something a tad smaller than the Bambino that could be worn in a range of environments. After a little bit of research, I pulled the trigger on a different Orient watch that doesn't seem to have had much coverage online. Introducing the Orient FAB 00006B9. This is part of Orient's TriStar or 3Star line, which seems to be their answer to the Seiko 5 range. Often these are available for even less than their Seiko counterparts. I managed to nab this one for under £100. I'll link it on Amazon and Joma Shop below so that you can check it out. And I'm going to cut to the chase and tell you up front, uh, this piece has really impressed me. It takes a different approach to the Bambino, but if it's to your taste, you're going to find some enjoyment here. This watch comes in at 37mm in diameter, 10.7mm in depth, and a fraction over 42mm look to look. This makes it an ideal candidate for regular to smaller sized wrists. I want to start with the case first because it reminds me of that on the Seiko SNKL23 and its contemporaries. This features a high shine bezel with alternating glossy and brushed finishes down the flanks and to the rear. While the case isn't particularly weighty for the low price, I think it looks much better than you'd expect and the transitions are pretty neat. At the three o'clock position, you also have a recessed crown, which tucks away nicely and looks great. This is easy enough to use and you can adjust the time and date with no real issues, though because of the recessed nature, this is always much easier without the watch on your wrist. You're also less likely to damage the watch too. Overall, the bulk of the watch looks much better than the rubbish online photos suggest. I can see something a little bit Rolex date just about the overall shape and design. The notch case back is very simple, but doesn't provide any exposure to the movement inside. This provides a limited 30 meters of water resistance, which is similar to many other watches of this style and cost. This essentially means that if you can, you should avoid getting this wet apart from some light rain. The worst part of this watch though is the 19 millimeter included bracelet. This is made of steel folded links and is outright awful. It feels light, tinny, it's a real hair pincher. It might even be worse than that found on some of the super cheap Casio digital models which are a sixth of the retail price. It's so poor that I easily warped one of the links whilst removing the adjacent ones. I was barely applying any force. Yeah, it's a piece of garbage. This watch definitely benefits from some form of alternate bracelet or strap. Though the typically awkward lug width, 90 millimeters again, thanks Orient, it leaves you with fewer options than you may otherwise have had. I chucked on this simple leather strap from Amazon and it feels much better straight away. Alternatively, there are some other options on AliExpress if you wanted a better steel bracelet. Those ones are solid links and have good reviews. If there's one saving grace for this stock bracelet, uh, at least you get plenty of micro adjustment options. That could be useful, but overall, uh, it's the worst part of the watch. When it comes to the overall aesthetic, this TriStar model is pretty bold. The gold colored applied indices and logo give this watch a touch of bling and I think pairs surprisingly well with the black dial. I love the proportions of the hour markers and the tiny loom pips that are positioned below each. These reflect very nicely under the right lighting conditions and give the watch more depth, contributing to somewhat of a premium feel. I also like the diminutive chapter ring around the perimeter. It's nice and small, but I think it looks pretty good. The main bulk of the dial is rather reflective, which may be a bit divisive. This features a ridged circular area towards the center, which provides like a near sunburst effect almost. I think I prefer more of a matte finish as from certain angles, it can look a little bit tacky for my taste. Though, if you're looking for a watch that stands out, this will certainly do that. I wish Orient would take the time to put a dark date wheel here. Unfortunately, we are left with a white one, but at least the surround is gold, which does match the indices nicely. 
as a whole though, for the super low cost, like 80 quid, um, I think the watch looks darn good. This style definitely looks better than lots of the opposition at this low price. You'll notice the second hand beating along rapidly as we're even getting a mechanical movement in this budget watch. Inside is an in-house 21 Joule Orient automatic movement, which I believe is the caliber F4902. This movement isn't much of a looker, which is why there's no exhibition case back. Though is known to be a very reliable workhorse that should last well over time. This one runs just over 10 seconds per day fast, which is completely fine for me. Just having an automatic movement and a smooth second hand present make this watch feel more expensive than the retail price would suggest. This movement also gives the watch both day and day functionality, which are adjustable by rotating the crown clockwise for the day and anti-clockwise for the date. Most of your fashion-y watches around this price, well, they almost exclusively contain quartz movements. Whereas with this, I think you get something a bit nicer. Covering the watch is a piece of mineral crystal. This is exactly what I would have expected and it's okay. It will provide some limited scratch protection, uh, but this one is quite reflective. Overall, I think the watch looks really attractive on the wrist. The smaller size might not suit larger wrists, but for most guys, this will sit there very nicely indeed. And because of the overall look, I think from a distance to an untrained eye, people think that this was a much more expensive watch than it is. And when you look at the design, I'm pretty sure that's what Orient were aiming for. From the shiny logo to the gold hands, this is a watch that demands attention. And while it doesn't have the finer details of a luxury watch, obviously, it does a fairly good job of imitating that. My fiance loves the look of this one and it's undoubtedly a compliment getter. Is the quality as good as the Bambino? Well, I think the Bambino still has the slight edge here. The dial looks more premium and the finishing seems to be a step above. Nevertheless, that's not to say that this three-star watch underperformed because it certainly doesn't. Compared to the majority of the competition below 100 pounds, this watch still holds up excellently. I think it's also more versatile than the Bambino too, given its size and styling. If you're after a touch of bling and don't want to splash out too much, this could be right up your street. I think it's got a bit more personality than some of the Seiko 5s, which sometimes look a bit stale. And it certainly makes a statement, even if it isn't to everyone's taste. I'll link it below if you want to pick one up and try them out.